Well, hello, Shell Buddies, and welcome back to the Ashway Bijou channel. Today, we're going to go take a look at some of our storm shelling that Debbie brought us. I've been deciding whether or not I wanted to do it in order, and I think I'm going to kind of just mix things up a little bit and start where we finished, at Sunset Beach. And that one I know is albino. It's purely white. And that, oh my God, is a little dove strawberry cockle. That is a really rare find. It's a wing oyster. Another rare find. As you know from watching the Beach Reports, Tropical Storm Debbie made quite the mess in Florida. But she did finally, a few days later, bring us some really spectacular shelling up at Passagrill and Sunset Beach. So, although we went to Sunset Beach second on this day, I'm actually going to start these shelling videos with this video because there were so many just unbelievable finds and right away, and we were just pick it up stuff that was awesome and of the of the three places we went which all you know had pretty decent shelling this one has a special place in my heart because it is sunset beach because so much damage happened there from Adalia because the dunes have been such a concern and because we haven't really seen great shelling there in a while so it's really fun for me to say let's go back to sunset beach and we're turning on to west gulf now Come down to Sunset Beach. Looks like folks are getting going over at Caddies. There's people on the beach here. And from where we were at Pass Girl, it looked like it was raining up here. But it's all dry. Alright, we have arrived at Sunset Beach. The wind here is quite a bit louder than at Passa Grill. And I hear a lot of surf roar and I see already big waves on the other side of this walkway. Oh boy, I see stuff on the beach though. Surfers are out. Sunset is known as a place you can do that. And that, I believe, is the National Guard Medical Chopper. Now, I don't know how they fared up here. We know Sarasota did need some urban search and rescue done with their flooding. Right here at the beach, maybe not, but maybe inland. As those rivers continue to spill out all of that rain we got. In case you're wondering, my walker's broken and doesn't fold now. I keep the good one for in the house. And this bragged out one for the beach. <laughs> Man alive, look at the pen shells. There are pen shells all over this beach. Very, very little left of the big trucked in dune project, but it did its job. It protected the parking lot, the road, the pavilion, and that's what it needed to do. So I guess it's okay if it's gone and flattened. You can see hints of the rocks that we used to see over here. And I can see that there's a massive boatload of pen shells on this beach. What else have we got? We got some scallops here, a lot of the pen shells, a lot of the Atlantic cockles. Got one that's hinged over here. What do we got here? No, is it? It can't be. Huh? That is a hinged fragile matra. You can kind of see 
that there's light. You can see my fingers moving back through there. This is a much different shell than the, the surf clam. Great little find, a hinge fragile Mactra. Ooh, I see a sand dollar in here. Look at this. All right, I'm freeze framing this here so you can get a look at what a sand dollar looks like when it's not just sitting on the top of the sand, but if you can only see a little bit of the middle exposed. Sometimes that's all you see of them. Make a circle around it. Get your fingers underneath, then lift. And that'll tell you how big it is. And it looks to be definitely expired and totally collectible. And that, oh my God, is a little dove strawberry cockle. That is a really rare find. A strawberry cockle. Oof, right out of the gate, are you kidding me? Last time I found one of these was, oh no, <laughs> was over at Lido. Boy, I'm glad I picked it up. I would have lost it. I was going to grab that yellow cockle while I was at it. But when I saw this guy, I stopped. That was nice, though. It did rinse off the sand dollar for me beautifully. And, of course, there is my little yellow cockle that I wanted. There's three great finds, four great finds already with the, the Hinge Fragile Mactra already here at sunset. Which is nice because, I mean, it doesn't look like there's a ton of stuff on this beach, but that's some pretty quality finds for right out the gate. I'm pretty excited about that. Especially about that. I only ever find these guys after we get a storm. All right, so I have this little separate bag I'm gonna use just for sand dollars in case we find a few more so that the shells don't break them. And then I will put these little beauties in here. This one in the special jar. Tiny treasures. Feedback on these little jars has been pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the stuff I need to get them in my store online so folks can get one of their own. What else do we have over here? We got a couple of really nice scallops. Look at that big base scallop there. That one's in rough shape, but this one's nice. That's beautiful. And that one too. Great colors. Another one right there. Ooh. And there's a little scorched mussel. Look at that. Old worn buttercup lucine. So yeah. Not loads of stuff, but quality stuff. Cool. Babe, you're never gonna guess what I just found. A little strawberry cockle, like the one I got at Lido after the storm there. Isn't that great? And a hinge fragile matcha. Well, let's walk around this little stretch right here where all this stuff is washed up and then head over on the other side of the rocks. Let's see what we see over there. I got a sand dollar already too. Now this is one of those places where sand dollars, hard urchins, and things like that will wash in. Here we have a smooth duck clam and a channel duck clam. Again, found right next to each other. That's fun. A nice tulip over here next to me. John didn't pick it up. Maybe it's alive. I think it is. I think it is alive. There's a live tulip in there. Hello, little friend. Here, we'll just make sure you can stay damp. up. How's that? Tide's on the way back up. You'll be okay. There's a cute little hinge prickly cockle pear. Wow, look at that purple. That's stunning. Lovely. As I stand back and look, there are quite a few hinged pairs, actually, of the pricklies. There's a pair, there's a pair, there's a pair. I did manage to get some nice ones after a dahlia. I haven't quite used them all, so I think I'll leave some of the bigger ones. And look, there's another sand dollar in here. I'm going to let 
the wave wash that one off too. Fabulous. Another lovely sand dollar. Lots of broken pieces of them as well. A hinged Ocinia up there. Now that little strawberry cockle. I've never found more than one at a time at the beach either. So I'll be keeping my eyes open to see if they, if they come up in groups or not. Uh, I found them so rarely that I, I really couldn't say. There's another sailor's ear. And another smooth duck lamb. <laughs> That's cool that they're coming up together like that. Now we also have an apple murex. He is still in his shell. Unclear if alive. If he is, he's he's beat up, so. Here, buddy. I'm, I'm just gonna hide you under those shells and maybe nobody will see you. And you get a chance to kind of recover. You guys have had a rough few days, that's for sure. Unfortunately, we're seeing quite a bit of this today. The, the sea stars have gotten all beat up, and I mean, you can see he's ragged. He's limp. He's kind of half dried out. So I'm not going to take that guy. He's in really rough shape. And you can collect them if they're dead. But they, they do take some preservation. Look at this whelk. All discolored from low oxygen sediment. That's awesome. Like gray and brown, that's neat. There's a hinged calico clam. Oh, so it is. There's a creature in there. He's not gonna be alive for long if he stays open. Ooh, what a pretty yellow coquina next to it. Wow. One of the surfers just said there's been some big fossils out here as well. I'm sure he means like big whelk chunks and stuff like that probably. Been that really quick over there. Yeah, it usually does. We usually do good right here until we get to that last little stairwell. Oh, look at the size of that moon. He's broke, but you can use the center of him. Yeah. Take him apart right there and right there and cut him down. Put that in the bag. Did you see any evidence of sand dollars? Very little. All right, let's get on the other side of the rocks. All right, I'm already crawling. That's what? Katiki for lunch. You want to go to Katiki for lunch? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, because we would normally eat at PAG at the uh, Paradise yeah. Grill. But we left to come here and check it out. Is this some Urex? Oh, he's alive. Hi, buddy. Wait, is he? Oh yeah, his operculum's attached, he's there. He's okay. I don't know if you guys remember from Winter Storm Finn, but... Oh, how the Murexes came in for that storm. Goodness. Got lots of those guys there. And DeSoto not very long ago. Look at that orange. Wow. Wow. That's one of the prettiest bay scallops I've ever seen. What beautiful color. What's this behind it? Hey, that's an alternate telling. Couple more nice finds. Awesome. And then, oh, look at that big piece of a sand dollar there. That's a beauty. Man, that orange is a stunner. Pow, look at that color. Another monster shell pile has washed in here at Sunset Beach. 
fantastic. Wow. Before I get up there though, I'm gonna grab this rare find right here, a paper cockle. I found one of these yesterday on our uh, beach adventures. So it's nice to see another one. Look at the colors on this one. The other one I got was pale and a little bigger. But this spiny paper cockle here has got all these great colors rolling through it. I'm gonna have to look and see if this is a paper cockle or if it's a semi but there's ribs on it. So I do believe it is the spiny paper cockle. And yes, indeed, it is actually the spiny paper cockle with that telltale pink in the middle and the yellow toward the bottom. What a great, great find. Two really rare finds here on Sunset already. We've only been here about 15 minutes. Phenomenal. Oh my gosh, tell me it isn't. You're kidding me. Okay, first of all, sand dollar right here in front of me. And then secondly, this looks like an albino prickly. I do believe it is. That is a prickly cockle. And it's all white, but is it albino? Or is it fossil and just white? Mm, I'm gonna go with fossil and just white. I'm not really getting the albino sense from it, but just to see a white prickly cockle on the beach after a storm, a lot of the times they have been albinos when we found them. It was a good day to come to sunset. My gracious. And it was hard to leave past a girl knowing that there was so much stuff, but we honestly really just, we wanted to see what this place looked like because the shellings were kind of messed up here ever since this winter. We haven't found much lately since uh, Finn. And today, look at us, finding all kinds of amazing stuff. There's another really pretty little hinged pair. What's the color inside like? Oh, orange and purple, gorgeous. That's gonna make pretty earrings too. Oh, another sand dollar. He's had a tougher day. I'll put him up here. Has somebody might see him and want to take him home. Okay, so what was the dune at one point? It was out to here, now completely pushed back, kicked in. Oh, so said and done, flattened. But they did their job which was protecting the road, the parking lot, the pavilion, and a few other things, so. Oh my golly. Whew. All right, Debbie, you sucked, but you did bring Shellapalooza, that is for sure. Piles of stuff here piles of stuff at Passa Grill and I'm suspecting at Lido now that it's calmed down. Oh my gosh. All right, I want to come over by these rocks just for a second and see what the water's like here too. Because stuff does build up around this little spot. And oh yeah, there's lots of shells in here. Lots of shells in here. Whether or not I want any of them, I'm not sure. Let's see what's going on. We're just about at the high tide time. So while we're here, it may be on its way down a little ways, which would be nice. It's still chocolate milk and still tough to see. But I can see that there's boatloads of shells in here. And when this is calmer and lower, it'll probably be a lot easier to shell it too. It's the case wherever we've been yesterday and today so far. Oh, beauty. I just saw a little pen shell down here. He pulls himself back up. Or he tried anyway. Yep, he did. Oh, sorry, buddy. I know you haven't had a great little, great couple days either. I'll put you back in the water in a second. Right after I grab that apple murex piece. It's not whole, but it's really pretty. I love the colors. Let's see. Lots and lots and lots of stuff out here. Oh, a little tough to shell the water. Just got my shoes full of junk. Oh, 
There's a nice olive that just got washed up. All right. Well, I'll take that guy too. That looks like a piece of a moon. It is. bigger one in front of me where John's already hitting. I'm going to come up here and catch up with him. But I am trying to go slow so I don't miss anything good. And I am going to try to be on this side of the pile in case anything washes away. There's a beautiful calico clam. How lovely. Great color on that guy. Really nice. Look at this. Look at this. Just a monster pile of cells, all sitting right here. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> there's a little hermit crab in there. I saw him dart back inside right as I picked the shell up. So no, I can't collect this little guy either. This little apple murex. Because a hermit crab has decided it's his home. He just barely sees, oh, he pulled back. I was just barely seeing him in there. Don't worry, little buddy, we'll leave you be. <laughs> there's another piece of a murex here. And there's a chestnut turban, and look at that. It's worn right down to the mother of pearl in a few spots. How beautiful. All right, this one, not in great shape, pretty crusty. So I'll leave that too. And I'll trade it for that really great worm snail. Awesome. Look at that. Little flattened out kitten's paw. It, oh my, it's just mind boggling. How much has come in? Absolutely mind boggling. Let's see what's over here. Surf clam there. Some arcs. Lots of scallops here where there weren't very many where we were. There's a nice sunray Venus. Ooh, look at the colors of that. That's pretty. There's a very pale faded buttercup Lucene. And look, it's a live base scallop. Look at that. <laughs> yes, I seriously just did scream like a girl right there. Yes, I did. Not proud. <laughs> me to death. <laughs> I'm sorry, pal. I probably scared you too. Hi. Hello, scallop. How are you? You'd probably like it if I set you back down. There's all those little eyes right there around the edges and all those little dots. That's how the animal sees. Okay, buddy. I'm going to put you back since I clearly annoyed you. <laughs> oh my god, that scared me. Such a girl! Jeez! Well, that's a nice buttercup lucine. And we got a spiny jewel box back here. And a gorgeous yellow cockle. What else? Oh, so much fun stuff. There's another yellow. A hinge pair. Ooh. Hinge pair of yellows. That's great. Fabulous. I see a tulip over here too. I think he might be alive. Are you alive, little tulip? You are. Hello, little friend. All right, I'm gonna give you a little bit of water to hang out in. Pick up these two more yellows that are fantastic, a third. Man, the yellow up here on these, knocking my socks off. Stunning and vibrant, beautiful. But right here, there's an empty murex, and there's another, or is it a drill? It's harder in this size to tell if it is a drill. And is that empty? 
Oh, no. I'm so sorry, little, little crab. There's a little long-rested hermit crab in there. We're going to leave him alone. I'm so sorry, pal. I didn't mean to be shaking your whole house like that. I'll take that apple murex, So That's a gorgeous one. Look at this nice caramel color on it. Stunner. Oh, poor puffer fish. I don't know if he's okay or not. I don't think he is. I don't know. He might be okay. I'm afraid to... I'm afraid to touch him, but... I'm afraid to touch him. Because... Okay. And look at the size of some of the sand dollars they get around here. Wow. And there's a nice big hinge docinia. And we have an alternate talon. And a very crusty fighting comp. And there's an olive. Another piece of worm. So yeah, there's plenty of fun stuff in this pile. Oh my gosh. I'm actually having more fun on this pile than I did at Pass the Girls pile. I also like when there's a shell pile and the water's hitting it because it keeps things wetter and it's easier to tell what's in there. Oh, I was going to grab that sand dollar, but I guess I'm not now. Look how pretty that yellow is on that crossbar Venus. That's great. And there's a little mossy arc. Woohoo! They'd be gone now if I hadn't grabbed them then. Heavens. I, I kind of like this surf action stuff here. I don't like that it washes stuff into my shoes, but I do like that it changes out what's in front of me and what's available to, to look at and go through. And I kind of like also the back of this pile for the same reason, because things get pushed up onto it and then pushed back. So I like to look at the backs of these piles as well as the fronts of them. Another pretty yellow cockle. They are phenomenal here today. And look, there's a little calico clam. And she's it's a lucky limpet! A lucky limpet. Alright you guys, you know how I feel about limpets. Whenever you find limpets, you find other good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and keep right where I'm at. Oh, look at that. There's another sand dollar. Limpets are lucky. And it's whole. I'm not sure what causes that strange purple discoloration. It's not natural uh, in this shade. But I imagine if I put that in some peroxide, it'll clean right up. Look, there's another live apple murex right there. Woohoo! We're in the splash zone now. All right, so that spiny jewel lock's not great on the other side, but look at the inside. Man, that's pretty. Golly. Yeah, I like this little pile edge. And this little area behind it. Look. John. Albino baby wolf. That's an albino baby whelk. <laughs> oh, an albino baby whelk. Wow! I was over the moon with this fine. And you can tell it's albino. It's not white. It's albino because it has a translucency to it. And that one I know is albino. It's purely white. And it's see-through. I can see the light coming right through it. Alright, so I freeze-framed this here because I want you to see how the light is kind of coming through. See in the center of the shell, kind of inside where the opening is, there's like a glow there. That's because light is transmitting through it. It's like translucent almost. Oh, it's so hard to get on camera, but it's beautiful. An albino lightning bug. An albino lightning bug. I can't even right now. That is a beautiful albino lightning whelk. Absolutely perfect. All his little beading details all the way around to the point. Stunner. Stunner of a find. Woo! Oh! 
out right Sunset Beach. Boy, you haven't given us much in the recent last few months, but today you are knocking it out of the park. Here's one of the lady-in-waiting Venus plants. What else is over here? What other goodies can I come up with? Oh, beautiful calico scallop and a bottle cap. I'll take those, get that bottle cap off the beach. And there's some worms right next to me too, which is fun. Oh, I'm ecstatic about that little well. Wow, what a find. What a find. Mm. Let's actually talk about that little guy for a minute and about albinism in general. How can you tell when a shell is just really bleached out and white versus albinistic or albino as we call them? Well, actually it's a little easier than you think, but it's kind of hard to show on camera. With an old shell or a shell that's fossilized, what happens is you get a calcification, kind of, um, where there'll be like a film on the outside of the shell. It's generally not uh, light transmissive or translucent in any way. It's just, you know, like a chalky white. And it, it doesn't really have that same shimmer to it that something that's albino will. And it's happened a couple of times now. In our collection, we have a fighting conch that's that way that we didn't even know until we removed the periostracum from it. That was from a trip a couple years back before the channel started down at Dickman's, actually. What a great day that was. Oh, man, wish I had footage of that one. Whew. The second one we picked up was a Murex, and I think I got that down in Sanibel, if I'm not mistaken. And then this one was at Sunset Beach. And, of course, we found the albino prickly cockles here and there after storms at a number of different places. But it seems to be a lot more common in that shell than it does in the others. And for a lightning walk, man, this is rarer than a Genonia, okay? This is a lot harder to find than a J. I'm serious about that. So I, I really wanted to sort of highlight where the differences lie. And it happens to be in that translucence, in that ability for the light to come through it. It's not that it's white. It's that there's an absence of color. And those two are not necessarily the same thing. It may be a little difficult to tell on camera, but when you see them in person, when you see that shell and you pick it up and it's wet and you can see the light just glowing through it, you just know. You just know. And it is not an easy find. It's actually a pretty rare find. So, mm. How exciting to get that here at sunset. Okay, so now that I've explained the absence of color thing, let's see if we can get a better look at it being outside in the shade. I think that might actually help. So let's take a look. Look at the light just come right through that thing. So that is what we mean by the absence of color as opposed to a white one. It doesn't do that. This one happens to be a fossil. It's all calcified. Grayish tint to it. But that's the difference. This is an example of a fossil. And it's calcified. It's got a little dirt in there. You can see. But that's just white. And yeah, it's dirty. But there's no hint that any light is really going through that. It's just pretty, you know, pretty white. No glass on it. I'll bring this back over. You can see shadowy, like a shadowy hint of where the lines would have gone. Just barely almost there. Not all covered with calcification. And definitely light coming through this shell like it, you can see the blue of my shirt coming through it look at that so that one is our little baby albino lightning whelk this shell shows a hint of it too Look how at the top of that wall, it's just about see-through there. See that? How it gets dark and my finger goes behind it? Same thing here on the side. 
so white is coming through this one too. Now I would have thought that this one was beast each one, but it's not. It's got a glossiness to it, you can see it. So it's not calcified and chalky, it's just very pale. So this one sort of leans that direction without being an actual albino. It's what we would call maybe albinistic. Alright, I better get these worm snails before that next wave comes through. Or they'll be gone. One here, and one here, and one here, and oh, ho, 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 baby! Another little horse punk. So I've got my first one here at Sunset Beach after finding a few over at Passagirl. Amazing! Amazing. Yes. I do not like the stress of the storms. I don't like the damage that it causes. I don't like being rained in and stuck home a few days. But the after, it's like the ocean apologizing for making our lives rotten and sending us presents. So that's how I tend to view it. Oh look, speaking of presents, there's a nice pair welk. And we got a piece of a tulip here. And a chestnut turban. Mercy me. There's a cute little mossy arc. I'm having a very hard time not being completely ADD right now. And just running amok. I'm forcing myself to be steady slow and stay low and it's hard because man I just want to run all over this place but whoa look at that guy what's that oh just a piece oh and there's another murex with a little hermit crab in him hi buddy I see you are you playing peekaboo with me hello friends are you gonna wave Hi! How are you? Alright little man, I'm gonna put you under here so you stay damp. And the waves don't batter you. I'll see you later. Okay, I'm having too much fun up here. <laughs> There's another piece of a tulip there. You gotta watch these shells carefully today. There seems to be quite a few hermit crabs in a lot of them. Let's see, we turn this over a little. We kicked out that beautiful, perfect, literally perfect turkey wing right there. Literally perfect turkey wing. Gorgeous. These yellow cockles all over in here. Oh, hey, there's a bubble. Hard to believe that survived all this thrashing around. And look. Look at the little mussels, all attached to like the same thing as seaweed. And there's still a little goo in them, so I'm not going to collect these guys because I don't know if they're really dead or not. Um, they may still be viable, so we're going to leave them over here by the water, let them get wet. But I just thought that was neat how they're all like kind of daisy chained together. These waves come up, they hit the top, and they push some stuff over the back and some new stuff into the front. And I like that, because that's how I find neat stuff. Getting washed in. That bright yellow, I can't say no to it. Can't do it. There's a nice old Sunray Venus clam. He's lost most of his sun rays, but you can still see them. That's a great shell. Love the discoloration on it. And I like being in this splash zone. It's keeping me cool, because it is mercilessly hot and humid today. Even with that breeze. Oh, look. A oh, little juvie fighting car. Oh, no, it's broken. And there's a mossy piece of the Florida worm. And another calico clam. What'd you find, babe? You got a sand dollar? Oh, I just had this little bag. That's where I'm putting them. Beautiful. 
we'll put him in the bag with the other guys. I wasn't even thinking. I didn't even bring a container for hard urchins or sand dollars or anything today. Usually I think about that kind of stuff before we come shelling after a storm, but I didn't think about it this morning. Oh, hinged calico, but still gooey. Nice olive. Oak and murex. That olive's gorgeous. I mean, like glass too. Wow. Nice. Now see, there's a load of shells down here in the water too. It's a little hard to see until it pulls back. But all that stuff, just getting pushed and pushed and pushed into this pile. See, look at this little Sunray Venus clam. He wasn't here a few seconds ago, and now he is. Let's see what's over here in this higher pile. A great piece of turkey wing, and look at that dark scallop. Hey, I like that guy, nice dark brown. That's great. Lots of slippers. There's a little spiny jewel box that's just kind of lumpy. All kinds of stuff. Oh, did you find some shark's teeth here? Yeah. Wow, can I see them? Hey, those are great finds for up here. You usually don't get those up here unless you go to Egg Maquis. Those are pretty special. I found one here at Egg Maquis like that. Nice. Very nice. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Always makes me happy when I see young kids into shelling and shark tooth hunting. That's so great. It means this hobby is going to keep going on. Nice little juvy fighting conch there. Beautiful olive right here. And look at the little sea star. Oh, buddy. I'm sorry you had such a bad weekend. He's most definitely expired. But he's not in as tatty ratty shape as some of the others we've seen. I think I'm going to take him home and try some preservation techniques on him. And these guys are going to go in my bag. Moving a little further up the pile here to see it, some different stuff. Look at the purple on that. Hello. And here we have some worms. These pieces of worm shell and another, another lucky limpet. <gasps> no way. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a little live banded tulip. Two limpets so far on this little pile. I took a seat on the pile because I had to change my battery. So I'm just looking around me to see what's here. I've already picked up a couple of pieces of worm shell because they stand out against all the other more regular shapes, which is a lot of fun. And I'm just sitting here marveling at how many shells we're finding today Whereas we haven't found that many recently because it was summer shelling conditions. It goes to show you, the shells do not disappear. They don't go away. They just need a little more force to drive them up onto the beaches for you, that's all. So summer, the ocean tends to be a little calmer and quieter until we get into storm season. But obviously, the shells that we weren't finding here at Sunset Beach were all just right out there. They were all just in the water. And today, as an apology, I suppose, Debbie's winds and ocean are giving us gifts. I'm having so much fun. But we do want to go see what Fort DeSoto is looking like, so we may not be here too much longer. There's a great Florida worm snail right there. And ooh, a live tulip. Let's put him down a little closer to the water. Here you go, buddy. Put your back back in all the way, but we'll keep you down. There you go. Crazy Florida worms, love them. The West Indians are the more regular. The Florida ones look like they've been to Jimmy Buffett's place. Now my camera battery died right as I found that second limpet, so I don't know if that made it on camera or not, but found two lucky limpets here so far. There's a nice buttercup lucine. 
another cool mossy. We may need to take a break for a little while and go get some lunch. I know I'm getting pretty hungry. So John and I are actually going to eat at a, a new to us place over here in Sunset Beach. Then we may try over behind Caddy's or we may go to DeSoto. We're not sure. But seeing this amount of stuff washed up here by the jetty makes me think that further up the way there might actually be stuff too. However, with tide getting to just about high, not sure it'll be awesome to go that direction. The color is phenomenal. So pretty, look at that. It's perfect. Just perfect. There's another nice calico clam. What are those washing in here today, too? Woo! Just got my feet buried. Look at how dark this guy is. Almost black, it's so purple. Whoa! That's great. That's incredible. Ah, you got purple, too. A little purple muscle. My little southern horse muscles I like. There's one there that's hinged. Uh-oh. That's a spotted slipper snail. I like those too. And here's another one of those lady in waiting. Pretty little lady in waiting Venus clam. And a sand dollar. Boy. Sunset's giving up the goods today, babe. Oh yeah. He was. He was a horse conk. Now he's not. Now he's just a piece but a really pretty piece nonetheless. That color is amazing. Too bad that's broken. What a beautiful piece of true. I will cut that guy up and make something pretty. That is beautiful. Wow. Those look so nice together, don't they? Aw. Look at that. Look at the color on that one, John. And another one of those ram's horns. Yeah, he's tore up a little bit, but that's okay. We'll still keep him. He's got rock in it, inside of it. That's a fossil one. That is a nice weld. Stunners. I know, his tide's coming in and it's pushing stuff. So we should eat and then get over to DeSoto for just past high. Oh my gosh. It's a wing oyster. Another rare find. Oop, there's an alive apple murex. And a little tiny whelk, but that wing oyster is a stunner. Look at that guy. He's a little broken around his edge, but that nacre is insane. How gorgeous. Hello, Hermie. Are you okay in there? Oh yeah, you are. There's a nice Murex John just picked up that's empty. Very cool. Yep, I saw that calico clam. Oh, I think he's still alive. He's closed up tight as a drum. Oh, we'll leave him there. The size of that yellow cockle is immense. Were these hinged? Did these go together? Nope, they didn't. They were both close by to each other in the low oxygen sediment though. Just like that scallop there. And a nice, another nice hinged pair of the prickly cockles. Look you know, that purple, pink, and purple. And look at this murex sitting right next to me. Dang. You're killing me today. Look at this moon snail. Ah, huge and intact. What a beauty. Amazing. Some stellar shelling right here after e our uh, Edalia 2.0, as I call it, Debbie. Had some really, really great finds today. Here's a couple fun little finds we usually see after storms, too. These are little golf ball sponges, they call them. Little naturally occurring sponge, that is their actual color. Uh, they do get mistaken for like spray insulation and stuff like that on the beach, but they're, they're squishy. And they're little sponges. I'm gonna leave those guys right there and pick up that spiny jewel box. There's a live calico clam. 
Ah, oh, shut up. Nice and tight. There you go, friend. And this upper rack line's been just bonkers redonkulous today. Look at this. Look how gorgeous the pattern is on that calico. And it's a hinged pair. What a stunner. Look at the purple inside. Oh, that's beautiful. Look, babe. Yep. How nice. What'd you find? Normally, I don't pick up many fighting ponds, but when it washes up, you can see that. Oh, wow. Look at the orange. And a nice little baby whelk. Cool. Great finds, babe. Those are awesome. There's a beautiful little whelk right there. How nice. Man, just finding some of the best stuff today. So fun. Look at the moon snail. Oh, that's a nice one. Super, super duper nice. Right on. A little surf clam there. Very old sun faded prickly cockle. Howard Buttercup who scenes and you can shake a stick at around here. And sailor's ears, good gravy. They're all over the place. I love this about the prickly cockles. They come in such a variety of color. I mean, look at this guy. He's mostly just peachy pink. And then we got these guys that are mostly just purple cranberry. And that dark one that I found earlier that's so purple it's almost black. This one here. Oh, yes. Sure. It's got that nice golden edge I like. Yeah, but it's got some shine on it. Oh, if it's got goo in it, leave it. See it? Yeah, I see it now. I was too busy looking at the shell color. <laughs> but there are some really pretty colored ones of these here today, too. I think it's time to get some something to snack on here. But from a shelling standpoint, it's going to be good for days. It's just going to be good for days. The beaches have piles. The water is loaded with stuff. It's going to be outstanding shelling for many days to come. All right, as you can see, shelling conditions here at Sunset Beach and Grill are primo. Primo, post-storm shelling is very similar to winter shelling. Lots of things to find, lots of things to see. And we're getting hungry. So this lovely little sand dollar will be the last thing I pick up right now over here at Sunset Beach. Then we're gonna take a break for a little while and go get some food. All right, we're going to get food in a second. John has come up with a cockle as well. That's a, actually, I believe this one is the semele. They call it the purplish semele, but it comes in tan, brown, orange, and uh, some speckled white and purple colors that are great. Beautiful find and a fantastic way to end our stop here at Sunset Beach. Thank you, Sunset Beach and Mother Ocean for the bounty of your gifts today. Thank you for your apology for kicking the crap out of us with Debbie. Thank you for sending us so many shells after her. And if you watched our beach report before, you know about this next section when we stopped at a little place to eat called Katiki. And it's a great place to get something to drink and a little snack after we went shelling. So just once again, want to give them a shout out. That's a great place to stop and have a little bite and some liquid refreshment if you go over to Sunset Beach. We are in this awesome little local bar called Hachiki. This had outstanding little cheeseburgers. John's still got a few onion rings left. Chris is on the bar pouring up some drinks. And if you're coming out to Sunset Beach and you want to go shelling, what a fantastic place to get a snack and a drink after you're done. Really, really fun in here. And a great view. You're inside, you're in the shade, but there's a, a beautiful breeze here. You can see the ocean right from where we're sitting. Can you believe the cool finds from Sunset? After it's been such a while, really, since we've gotten anything super cool there, I mean, Finn was like the last big whoa, other than Adalia with all the hard urchins and the sand dollars. So this was really cool to see these piles brought in and to see them at Sunset Beach once again. Made it really, really nice because things had changed so much there. 
with that replaced dune getting kind of washed back in, the approach being made a little different, the area around the rock jetties are a little different now too. So yeah, it, what an awesome time we had at sunset. Mwah! Fabulous, fabulous after storm shelling. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's little adventure and just know that there's a couple more coming because we have also Debbie Shelling from Passagrill from Lido Key and a trip that we took to Sanibel right before it all started. So I've got lots to share with you. Unfortunately, I've been a little late up since Debbie and I haven't gotten a ton done. Kind of messed up my back during that uh during the storm of you know getting ready in case we lost power and this and that and then going and running around checking on places after the fact kind of did a number on me so while I've been resting and uh, trying to take it easy and everything else I am trying to get back into a little bit more of a regular editing routine too so hopefully I'll be back out there on the beach very soon in the meantime lots and lots of fun places and things and finds to share with you and if you want to have adventures like these then you know what you need to do get out there and go shelling <laughs>